Hi, today I would like to tell you a few words about staffing policies. Something that might sound super theoretical. The question is, what form we can use it? Uh, Based on what you will find in other materials, we have different categories and there are different reasons why the staffing policies should be created. So today I'm not going to tell you why to create them, where, because you will find them in uh, other materials. But I would like to present you a practical example how these staffing policies might look like and what for we will or we can create them. Um, to make it as understandable as possible, in here we will just base this staffing policy on only one variable, which is nationality. Basing on the nationality uh, of the employees, you can find three types of strategies. There is the ethnocentric approach, the polycentric approach, and geocentric approach. And I would like to um, present you shortly what each of this type of strategy is. And basing on that, uh, you can realize what are the consequences and why these strategies are used. So let's start with the ethnocentric policy. Ethnocentric policy, that's the one uh, which these days is not that popular. But especially in the end of uh, 20th century, it was very popular in two countries, Japan and South Korea. And in there, we can say that majority of the employees which were sent from Japanese or South Korean companies abroad, they were either Japanese or people from South Korea. Because basing on that approach, all key management positions in the offices or factories which are owned by the company from that country somewhere abroad are filled by the people from that country. Just to give you the example, if you have Japanese company, they open the new factory in Poland. The key management in that factory, that will be the people from Japan hired by that company and sent to that factory to Poland. Uh, well, the question is why? In here, we can find three most important reasons why that type of approach was used. The first one, that the company might believe that in a host country, so the country in which they are investing their money, there is lack of people with proper qualification. Today, this case is not that popular. We can find it in the countries which are underdeveloped or looking at historical examples in uh, the 90s of 20th century in the countries which, over, which just changed the system from communism to uh, democracy and free market, like Poland. It was pretty popular because in that time, when the foreign companies, they were opening their offices or factories in Poland, first they sent their foreign managers because there was lack of people here in Poland who knew how this type of companies in uh, an uh, open market should work with the proper qualifications, knowledge of language. Uh, so in the first years, they were mostly foreign managers, but in majority of the companies, after a few years, they were replaced by the managers from Poland who were just promoted in that companies. I said in majority, but not in all of them. And especially Japanese and the companies from South Korea are well known from that, that they are still sending their employees like that. Why? Because they feel that's the second advantage. That's the best way to unify the corporate culture. So if we have dedicated culture, like in the companies from Japan or South Korea, no one according to them, will present it better, how this company is organized, what the culture, how the procedures should look like, than the person from that company, from this country, uh, will illustrate it better. And also because of that, that type of companies, they think that the best way to transfer core competencies, for example, concentrating on the quality, like it's many times done in Japanese companies, Six Sigma, uh, all quality perspectives just in time. In here, they found that the best it might be transferred by the managers from Japan to the local employees. These are the advantages. The question is why this uh, approach is not that popular these days anymore and it's not that popular outside of these mostly two countries. Well, first one, it limits the possibilities for the local employees to be promoted. So. Practically, it just means that if you work in giving you the example of a company from Japan and you're a very good employee and you would like to be promoted, you would not be. Why? Because you're not Japanese. 
or I can try to do lots of things, but I will not become a Japanese. Uh, so it just means that if you would like to uh, motivate these people, it can be mostly done just by money, which limits the possibilities of motivating and promoting people. Uh, well, um, there is a second problem. Um, I would say that even more important these days. It just says that these companies, they don't get the local context or the country in which they are investing uh, the money, which is called cultural myopia. Um, I will give you the example. Uh, the example of one of the best well-known companies from South Korea. They decided to invest their money in a pretty small city in the center of Poland, which is called Muava. The case was well known and you could read about it in many newspapers here in Poland because that company, they opened there the factory which was producing TV screens. Uh, they hired more than uh, one and a half thousand people and uh, they transferred all main managers from South Korea. And these managers, they transferred exactly the same way of managing the people like they did in South Korea. Example, you started your day at work at 7 a.m. starting to sing company anthem that this company is the best, this company is a part of my life, which was motivating in South Korea, in Poland. The employees were just laughing. Uh, well, the other cases, the best known case was just that, uh, that one of the managers of the company just asked the leader of the unions to his office. And they couldn't agree, uh, so he hit this leader of the union in his face like that. And the leader of the unions, well, he called the police. Because, first of all, it's not accepted in here. Second, it's illegal in here. Uh, there were lots of problems with understanding the local context in here, which generated lots of problems for that company. Because uh, the managers from South Korea, they found and they thought that the local employees, they can't, can't adapt. The local employees, they thought that these foreign managers, they don't get the local context. Because of that, there was a huge fluctuation of uh, the personnel in that company and after some time it started to become a huge problem. How many new employees you can find to work in this factory? They had to brought them by buses from quite a long distance which started beside all other things to be expensive. After some time, finally, they hired few Polish managers and it doesn't mean that Polish managers were better just because they were Polish. No, at all. But they adapted the policy more to the local context, just that it might be understood by the workers on the production line and all the other type of employees. And after that time, um, their part of the problems, which were just mentioned by me, uh, luckily it disappeared. So that's the ethnocentric approach, but there are some other possibilities. If not the ethnocentric approach, maybe we can start with polycentric approach. Polycentric approach just means that uh, you recruit host country nationals to manage the manager's position in the local offices, but in headquarters of the company, you hire parent country nationals. Giving you the example, if you have a company from the US, they open the new office here in Poland, the main manager of that office might be someone from Poland. But in headquarters of that company in the US, it still will be someone for only the people from the US working in there. What are the advantages of that? There is less problem with something which I've just mentioned before, so cultural myopia, understanding the local market, because the local market is just managed by someone from that country, which means that person knows the local taste, how to deal with the people, uh, what is, if you produce the local advertisements, what is funny for the people, what is not. Uh, it's also less expensive than the ethnocentric approach there because there is less people that you have to transfer all over the world. It just means if you send them from, you send all the managers all over the world, you have to transfer them, transfer their families, pay them extra for being abroad, control them while they are being abroad. With polycentric approach, you're losing part of these problems, so it's cheaper for the company. These are the advantages. What are the disadvantages? Well, first of all, for host country managers, there is still the problem how they might be promoted. Because you might be promoted to the level of the local manager, and that's all. You cannot be promoted higher to the headquarters level. So, for the people who are lower in the structure, they might be promoted, but the managers, still there is a problem how to, um, how to motivate them. Practically, managers, they are the people who should be mostly motivated, just to motivate other people in that country. 
Second problem, there is a gap in communication between the local managers and the offices and the people in headquarters. Why? People from headquarters, they were not that often sent somewhere abroad. The people from the local offices, they never work in the headquarters. And I'm not talking about the fact that there is a problem about the language, because in most of the country companies, there is one official language, and that's the one that which you use in communication. But I'm talking about language problems like how they communicate between each other if they didn't work together in one place. But there is also a problem with controlling how someone, for example, from Alaska, can control uh, the management in Poland or in Estonia and decide if they are growing good enough or if they are not growing good enough. Giving you the example, the market, I mean, the company generated 10% higher growth than last year here in Poland. Is it a good result or a bad result? That's the question. How to compare it? Compare it to a German market, to Estonian market, to the local competitors? There are lots of methods about which I will tell you in different, I mean, in another topic, but it's just more complicated to do it in that way. Uh, that's the polycentric approach. And then we're just reaching the third perspective. If not ethnocentric, if not polycentric, why we cannot do it differently? Why we should think about nationality? We live in an open Western world. Why not just to do it in an easy way? Hire anyone we require not thinking about nationality, which is called geocentric perspective. What are the advantages? Well, first, you can find and make the best use of the human resources that you currently have. The best specialist from marketing is currently someone from Egypt. Okay, we have very sophisticated project. We will just take that person to work with us right now. Nationality? Come on. We just need the qualifications. That's all what we need in here. The second perspective, it helps the company to build the card, I mean, the group of people who has international experience. How it might work? Well, you have someone who's just an expert in opening new offices within the company. So there are like three people, one from France, one from Germany, one from Poland. They've already opened 25 new offices all over the world. And we're going to appear on another market. We will take these people and they will help us with opening the new office in there because they know how these procedures within the company are work. They know what they should concentrate on and what type of people they can they should find locally to help with that. Um, what else? It helps you to omit the problem of cultural myopia. Many, I mean, giving you the examples from Poland, many times it was done like that, that there was international company which was appearing on the Polish market and they made the CEO of the Polish, I mean, the main manager of the Polish office, someone who was Polish and last seven, 10 or 12 years spent working in that company in London, Berlin or somewhere, somewhere else. That's someone from here, but that's someone also who knows the company. And finally, reduces this culture of myopia by understanding what are the differences between the people, that's our culture, that's not our culture, because our culture is global. That sounds super nice. The question is why it's not that popular, within even these big international companies. There are a few problems. The first one, countries want uh, foreign direct investment, which is called FDI in here. Practically, we want as the country uh, that foreign companies will invest in our place. Giving you the example, we want the new car factory to be opened, for example, in Poland, by the company from China. Yes, we want it. But we want that this company, when they will open the factory here in Poland, that of course they will hire the people from here, from Poland. We don't want to be that to be done like that, that Chinese company is investing in Poland and taking all the employees from China to Poland. Not like that, because the countries, there is a immigration law. There is all the law about how to pay the taxes, how many people, how much time they can spend between the countries. What else? Second problem. Countries, many times they require to provide extra documents if we want to hire someone from abroad. And of course, we can say China, EU, there are some extra documents. But you can find it even in, within the countries like well-known case was Quebec. So there were international companies that wanted to invest money in Quebec, Canada. And when they wanted to take their managers from, for example, from uh, Germany, 
That person, according to the law in Quebec, has to speak two languages, English and French. And even if in our company we speak English only, and that person will need only this language, according to the local regulation, that person must speak both languages. If not, yeah, I mean, flow of market, flow of people is free, but with it, without that, we cannot select everyone that we want. And two, I mean, one more case. That type of strategy is super expensive. We have some international companies in which up to 20% people are every day abroad. But thinking about that, um, try to imagine how much you have to pay to those people extra. If you are, for example, if every company is sending this medium level management somewhere abroad, like you have to spend at least one year abroad to be promoted. That means you're transferred, your family is transferred. You got extra money just for being abroad. All in all, it generates very high costs. And that's why this type of strategy is mostly used by big international companies. Um, if you take a look on this case that we've just discussed about this staffing policy, I just gave you the example of the policy with only one variable, which is called nationality. These days, of course, these staffing policies are definitely more complicated when they are done by uh, big companies. And because of that, you can find that even having that type of strategy, it has strong influence on how our company is managed and how it is existing on the markets. And when you build that type of strategy, it has to fulfill the general strategy of the company. And you can see how big results it will have on uh, general results and general everyday life of all the company. Thanks.